ticks, pips, flips, lips. They all sound very similar. In this video, I'm gonna break down what a tick is for all of you brand new futures traders. Obviously, there were a ton of people trading Forex and due to the macro environment, can't really trade Forex anymore. So what is a tick? And I'm not talking about the little thing that sucks blood out of your body. Ticks are what we call the smallest movement for futures contracts. So if you're coming from the Forex world and there are many of you right now, we're happy to have you over here onto the better side of trading. Uh, there are a ton of benefits. So I'm gonna go through quickly what some of those benefits are, as well as helping breaking down movements on futures contracts, because they're all different for every single contract. So this is really, really important. It's also really, really powerful when you're deciding how to use your leverage, right? And how the leverage as well as price per tick should inform your trading decisions. If you're new here, my name is Forrest. I invest in stuff and I think that everybody should too. There are a ton of links below. Just started an awesome partnership with my funded futures. So go ahead and consider that an announcement. And of course, if you want to get access to our discord, I actually have a special going on. There's going to be a link hidden here later in the video for a special March discount on our discord on top of the seven day free trial that we already have. Wow. A lot of stuff going on here to help all my affiliate links and discount codes are down below for many of the firms putting 50% off on some of them. So even if you're not going to use my funded futures, which you should, there are others. I've been doing this for a while. Like I said, in any case, let's break it. Let's break it down. I've gotten feedback that sometimes it can be hard to follow and that I've made assumptions in some of my videos. So I'm going to go really slow. We're going to start with a blank chart and really go into the weeds with this. Awesome. So we're going to leave SPX and go to ES. So first, very briefly, let's talk about what a futures contract. A futures contract is a contract that basically says, I want to buy this on this date at this price. Very simple example. Let's say that you want to buy this laptop that I have. And you think that in the future, the prices of laptops are going to go up. So you convince me to sell it to you in three months for a thousand dollars. We go into that futures contract. So in three months, you have the right to buy this for a thousand dollars. Three months goes by, we look out at the market, and it turns out that laptops are worth $3,000. So you got a really good deal. The price of the contract, the contract isn't gonna be $1,000. You're gonna have to put up the $1,000 at that date when you execute the contract. So there's gonna be some value in the contract. Contract could be $30, it could be $50, it could be $200, but the contract is gonna have its cost to actually execute you know, the actual right written to the contract, which again, in this example, is buying this laptop for $1,000 in three months. So that's how futures work both sides, buying and selling. There are tons of different types of futures. We're here on ES. There are two futures that I trade and that I recommend. Okay. I trade index futures. So if you are familiar with the S&P 500, it says S&P 500 e-mini futures back here. I like to trade this right next to SPX. So I'll open up another chart. We'll change this to SPX. And we have very similar price action. They're not exactly the same because SPX does not trade overnight but futures do. So that's another very important thing with futures is that futures trade 25 by seven. What does that really mean? I'll actually just break it down instead of the 25 by seven. So there's a one hour settlement during the week. Okay. So there's one hour settlement from five to 6 PM Eastern standard time. So the market actually closes from five to 6 PM Eastern standard time, and then reopens going around to the next morning. Regular trading hours are 9 30 AM. Okay, which we call RTH, which is regular trading hours, or 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, same as the equities market. Okay, very, very similar. I trade index futures. There are many types of futures. Okay, there are many types of futures, such as, and you're probably saying, Forrest, what, what types of futures are there? Let's move our screen and let's, let's talk about it. There are gold futures, there's oil futures, there's silver futures, there's corn futures, there's... NASDAQ futures, okay, SPX, really ES futures, uh, we'll call that. These are indexes. There's tons of different types of futures contracts. All of them, and this is going to get into the, the point that I want to make here, okay? Let me just zoom in. That's fine. We'll move that over here. Each of these has their own tick value. Each futures contract has its own tick value. So what does that mean? Well, first we have to describe what a tick is. So a tick is the minimum amount that the price can move. You're probably familiar or thinking of prices in dollars and cents. Right now, looking at this ES index, we can see that the prices are in the 
4,700s, 4,780 right here on my marker. If we look at the range in prices from, we'll just do the bottom of this candle to the top of this candle here, okay? We're going from 470175, 4839. That is a, we can just do a measured move. That's actually bigger than I want it to be. But 137.75 points. This, this, this example worked fine. I forgot I was on the one day. I was going to do like a five minute example and show you guys small prices. But it really doesn't matter what time frame you're in. This is 137.75 points. 137.75 dollars. Okay, still haven't got to ticks yet. So let's let's review so far. Let's go ahead and write that down. So one dollar is equal to one point. Okay, but the dollars amounts here, the points aren't the, aren't the values. This is a hundred and thirty seven point change, but it's not a hundred and thirty seven dollars of value. Okay, that's that's what I want to really hone in on here. It's a hundred and thirty seven point change, but not one hundred and thirty seven dollars in value. So how much was it? Well, on ES futures, one tick is worth twelve dollars and fifty cents. Okay, and one point is worth $50. So how do these two relate together? How do one tick being worth $12.50 and one point being worth $50 relate to each other? Well, one tick, one tick is $0.25 or 25 cents. This is where people get tripped up when they first come to futures because they wait, they go, wait, how is 25 cents worth $12.50. It's not. Okay. So this is the value of the index. This is the price. This is the value of the index. The index is tracking. It is a, a, a calculation of the value of all the things that it's tracking. With it expressly made for us to get a finger on the economy and we're trading futures on that, which is another derivative of that index. Okay. So we're trading a derivative of a derivative. The point is this index, the changes in its price, even though they're in dollars, the actual value of a point, which is why I don't use, I don't use the term dollars. I use points. Okay. A uh, one point is worth $50. So this is a 137 point change. That means that we can do some math here and see that 137 points times 50, $6,850. We have to answer that question, $6,850, okay? And we'll put that in black right there. That's how much it's worth, $6,850 for that 137 point change from this low to this high right here. And that's because every tick is 0.25. So what does that look like on the smaller time frames? Let's go to the five minute and zoom in a little bit. So on the five minute, we go way, 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 way in should eventually get ticks on our chart here and i probably could have just went to the one minute actually let's go to the one minute i need to auto adjust this here i think uh, we need to go to the four thousands let's see there's a chart okay so we're on the one minute and we're super duper zoomed in and look at the prices on the right side of my screen the minimum amount that this can move and you see it gets very very square and jagged here because the tick amounts are 0.25 the price here, okay, if we look at this candle right here, we'll do option V, put a little vertical line on there, and let's change this to black so you guys can see it. We're looking at this candle right here. This candle starts at a price of 5,140.25. If it moves a tick, one tick down is 5,140, okay? Another tick up is 5,140.50. So the minimum price it'll move is what a tick is. So ES can only move by values again, and I'll write this down again. Okay, one tick is worth $12.50. So the minimum change in value in a trade, when you're in a trade on, in ES features, is $12.50. Every trade you're in is gonna go up and down by $12.50. I wanna make that super duper clear. It's never gonna say five, it's never gonna say $16.33. It's never going to say, you know, 17. It's always going to be 12.50 in multiples of $12.50, okay? As it goes for tick. If you get one point, if it moves four of these, 12.50 plus 12.50 plus 12.50 plus 12.50 is $50. 12.50 times four is equal to $50. So that's how you get one point being worth. So if you went from 5,140.25 to 5,139.25, that is worth uh, $50 per one contract, okay? So all of this is per one contract, per one contract, okay? So if I were to be in, let's say, five contracts, if I'm in five contracts, if I go short five contracts, how much is this move worth? To give you guys a little real-time homework assignment. How much is the move worth if I go short five contracts from 5,140.50 to 5,138.25? And I'll mark that up again. Do a little Alt-J there and a 
little Alt J there. So 5,140.50 to 5,138.25. Give you a little. All right, here's how we do the math. So we do 5,140.5 minus 5,138.25 is, the answer was 2.25, okay? It's 2.25 points. Obviously, you can do that in your head, but it's 2.25, okay? 2.25, 2.25 times 50 is $112.50. So this move is worth $112.50 for one point. 2.25 times 50 times five, $562. 50 cents. So that little move with five contracts is worth a little over $500. Obviously, the inverse is true. If it goes against you, if your trade goes against you, you'll get smoked. That's ES. Let's talk about it on NQ. So let's go and look at NQ and let's break down what NQ is worth. So one tick on NQ is equal to 0.25. Okay. And this is going to be another little kind of homework assignment for you guys. All right. Uh, one point on NQ is worth $20. Okay. We're going to double up on dollars. I know it says $20 dollars, but just for the sake of visual clarity, we're going to say $20, $20 dollars. So one point on NQ is worth $20. One tick on NQ is 0.25. So what's 20 divided by four? This is gonna give you that one tick is worth $5, okay? So this is on NQ, the big boy. Why do I say it's a big boy? Because NQ moves fast. And at the very beginning of this video, I said leverage, tick amount, point value are all gonna depend or determine how much leverage you should, you should use. So let's look at from the top to the bottom here. We see that this is 56 points, okay? Let's actually just go ahead and, and plot this really quickly. Here to here. We'll measure this and it doesn't have to be perfect. This is 56.75. So let's just write down 56.75 points. Okay. This is the one minute chart. This is a 56.75 point move on the one minute chart. Okay. So if I'm, let's say that I had a perfect setup and we're not even going to talk about whether this is a real setup or not. It doesn't really matter. I had a perfect setup and I shorted right at the top and got out right at the bottom and one point is worth $20. Well, then we could say that 56.75 times 20. That's $1,135. I don't know off the top of my head that 50 points on NQ is a grand and 100 points is two grand. I know that because I trade NQ every day. I also trade MNQ, which is the micros, okay? This is super duper important, right? Because even though this is worth more per point, one point on NQ is worth $20. It also moves much more aggressively, way more aggressively, okay? You see that it's, it's up in the 18,000s. That's kind of a, a rule of thumb. The higher the index value, the more it's gonna move um, as an order of magnitude. If you're unsure, you can always just check the values. That, that really is a rule of thumb. But in general, you wanna pay attention to the actual value of the movements, okay? Because even a little wick, if this goes against you 10 points, okay, I'm not even gonna do the math, it's just 20 times 10. This goes against you 10 points, which is very, very reasonable for NQ. It's very, very reasonable for NQ for to go against you 10 points. It's $200. You have to be able to eat $200 in your trade and all of your setups. So if you've just bought an account on My Funded Futures, and you want to be safe about not blowing it up. That's why I recommend trading things like MES or MNQ. So let's look at MNQ. So these are the micro e-mini NASDAQ futures. So these are a tenth of what the NQ is worth. Let's actually just write it out. So one point on MNQ is worth $2, okay? The exact same movement, same prices, but one point is worth $2. So our movement from top to bottom again, let's just measure it from here. Or actually, it was off of this high from here to really not let me click here to here was uh, that's not what I measured. 56.75 points. OK, 56.75 points times two. Uh, you can do that math in your head. It's a hundred and twelve plus point seven five uh, times two is a dollar fifty. Hundred and thirteen fifty. Okay, dollars. Okay, on M and Q because one point is worth two dollars. So what I usually do, and this is what I recommend. This is, this is where I actually get to the what does force think for all of you new futures traders. I trade five M and Q, which is ten dollars a point. Why? Because if we go to the higher time frames, okay, this is basic, basic math. One one point is worth two dollars per contract, trade five of them, you're getting $10 a point, which is half of if you were just trading one in Q. It will be more commissions because I'm trading five contracts, I'm trading five M in Q instead of one in Q. So I'm trading literally five times as many commissions, but my per trade risk is much lower. Okay. If we zoom out to the actual move on Friday, this day here, we can see that from low to high, you can see how zoomed in I was. This was a 344 point day. So what's 10 times 344? Let's imagine if, if I went long from the low to the high of the day, 
and there were a lot of people on our discord who were just holding longs i didn't catch the whole move i got i got like literally this last part of it like up here and this where literally where i made all my money of the day i was busy like setting up new youtube channels and stuff but 338 times 10 3380 okay that's a 3380 dollar move trading small size okay you can trade even smaller than that you could trade three m and q and i'm gonna i'm gonna show you that which is six dollars a point okay if you trade three m and q which i think is even better and i trade three m and q three m and q is six dollars a point okay two times three gives you six 338 times six is a two thousand dollar move and this was the entire point of this video actually this very last part right here because every single day people ask me literally every single day multiple people ask me what's what size should i trade i'm always telling people to trade smaller the immediate feedback and probably what you're thinking right now is like well then it's going to take me so long to pass now the reason it's taking you a long time to pass these accounts is you're not being consistent and i'm telling you as someone who's blown up accounts before I usually, I blow up accounts for a few reasons because I try to flip them. I do high leverage flips, which is a strategy that people do. I've done it many times. Sometimes you employ a flipping strategy. That is not trading. I want to make that very clear. If you're trying to high leverage, essentially flip a coin to pass an account, you essentially have to recognize that there's a 50-50 chance that that blows up. That's not trading, okay? We can accept that it's a strategy to pass an eval quickly, but it's not trading. And it's not gonna set you up to be a successful trader, which is the most important part, which is why I don't recommend it for people who come into my Discord. Everybody wants to do that. They're like, yeah, but I just wanna pass. You're not telling me how to pass. And I'm like, well, I'm trying to help you how to trade. I've been trading my own account for years. Before I ever got into prop trading, I was trading my own account, real money, still do. Real account was my leader account. I'm telling you guys, you will blow up if you trade large and you don't have experience. It's 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 inevitable, okay? I don't want you to go and buy an account with my fund futures if you're just gonna blow it up. It doesn't make any sense. If anything, don't do that. Just trade sim and wait to come back to the prop firms until you have a journal and a history of things. I think prop trading is a great way to leverage, but it only makes sense if you're gonna actually trade. So trade smaller, 3M and Q, you would have made a little over $2,000 on that move. Obviously, you're not gonna catch this move. Let's say you made a fifth of that, okay? Can't do the math, that's $400. It's $400 trading $6 a point. It's way, way, way smaller, but the inverse of that is also true, okay? When we talk about risk, risk management, okay? We won't stay in this too long because I have a ton of videos talking about risk, talk about it literally all the time. You have to protect your capital stack as a trader. There are a, a million different ways where you can strategize about that, trading smaller, props, you know, there's per trade risk and there's capital stack risk is how I break it down into, right? Per trade risk is, you know, what are the odds that this trade is going to be profitable? Alpha, there is, there are ways that you can measure potential returns on trade, which is like RR, the actual risk per hope, expected value. There's many different types of risk. Expected value, again, really only counts if there's a thesis for that trade, which is even more complicated. Let's just talk about protecting your capital stack. Alpha and all those things aside, the odds of your trade panning out aside, what are the odds that this trade takes you out of the game? Okay, that's what I mean by protect your, your capital stack. What are the odds? Protect your capital stack. You can't blow your account up if you trade smaller. Well, I'll amend that statement. You can, but it's going to take you longer and it's going to give you more time to be more successful. If you get better at holding your winners longer and cutting your losses sooner, your win rate won't matter because you could be wrong five times, lose $30, have one trade on the day, two trades on the day, and make four or $500. Okay cover your losses you'll be able to stop fishing you can hold and be like okay this was that trade that i was looking for hold it until your thesis plays out and that's what we do i know after looking at real data from profitable traders that most traders net 50 percent or lower win rate okay regardless of what anybody says most people have a 50 percent or lower per trade win rate but you can still hit profit factors of over two with those win rates how well that's because you trade smaller risk hold your winners, hold your winners, you lever into a setups. Okay. So if my, if I'm managing my capital stack and when I have a very, very good trade, maybe only shows up once a month, maybe I quadruple my trade size, things like that. Managing my risk. So I get asymmetric returns is why that happens. But I tell you due to the law of numbers and things like that and our nature as humans, and just literally what I've seen through traders, most traders hover around 50% win rate, which means you have to manage your capital stack. Okay. You can't lever into losers and you can't hold losers. If you're holding losers by law of math, you will run out of money. If you hold your losers, you have to hold your winners and you have to cut your losers. Easiest way to do that. Again, risk management, trade smaller, understand the tick amount. Things like gold, gold, oil, all of those have different amounts. So let's look at oil as one more example. This will be quick. So oil has a tick value of 0 0.01. Whoa, can't type. Has a tick amount of one cent. Okay. But each tick is worth $10. 
So you're probably like, whoa, that seems crazy, right? Every one cent move is worth $10. Yes, but you'll look at, if you look at the value here, the amount of this move here on this chart is $1.15, okay? So what's $1.15 when each cent is worth $10? I know that a point on CL is $1,000, okay? So the math on this with a penny being worth $10 is that one point, one point is worth $1,000. And I just know that from experience. I don't even gotta do the math because you can do the math, but it is what it is so each dollar change in the cl futures contract is worth a thousand dollars it's a lot of leverage a lot of leverage there okay so if you were to trade 10 of these one point is worth a thousand dollars and vice versa it moves slower though slower not really but the, the the dollar change is the dollar change in the index is much slower um, so cl is a very very high leverage um futures asset but i'm gonna stop this video here guys and if you made it this far or if you just scroll to the end of the video hey look at you you beat the system but the code for a discount we're actually going to offer a 20 percent discount if you use this code uh, making a difference in march and the difference we're going to make is to your account by managing your risk smarter you're going to join the discord we're going to help you we're going to keep you accountable best we can one of the things that's different about our discord i'll let you know right now is that we're not just a typical call out group we're real traders we're more like a trading pod okay we're more like professional traders trading together in a pod the difference is obviously we're here to teach you but you just get to listen to us reason about the market if you just want call outs and freebies and things like that and you're not serious about being a trader I'll tell you right now you're not going to like it i've seen the difference of people who come in and leave because they want to brain off all day then hear us say go long and then exit here without them ever having to learn anything those people always fail because as soon as they leave the group or we're not on or whatever they have no idea what to do okay my goal and my job really that i'm taking on here is to help you pass your accounts be profitable even if you're not a prop trading again i don't trade my prop accounts every day i'll be with you guys i trade my personal account i trade options okay most of my money is was made outside of prop accounts uh, to this day even though I, I trade them because the leverage is awesome and yeah i want you to do that too i want you to be able to do that but anyways join the group march diff see you there like this video subscribe and see you in the next one Peace.